The worst feeling is when you play through a game and have an amazing time, then you jump online and search up the game only to find out that that's where the series ended with nothing from it in years. Hey there, welcome back to Shinky Plays and today we're talking about series that developers just abandoned for seemingly no reason whatsoever. There are many games that get incredibly positive reviews, but never got a sequel or another game in the series. As a rule for this video, I am considering an abandoned IP as an IP that has not gotten an entry or remaster in the last 10 years. So grab a drink, grab a snack, get ready to hear about 5 series that have been abandoned and need to come back. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. The first game series I want to talk about is Alundra. Alundra was originally released in April of 1997 for the PlayStation 1. The latest release of the Alundra IP was Alundra 2 A New Legend Begins, released in November of 1999. Alundra was a puzzle adventure game in the same vein as Zelda. While I personally think that Alundra 2 is okay, it's not that hard to see how it killed the series. It was a huge departure from what made Alundra so great. Alundra 1 was a top-down adventure game with incredibly difficult puzzles and tight, crisp controls with fun gameplay. Alundra 2 stripped everything away that made Alundra worth playing. It had slow combat, the puzzles were incredibly easy, and the game tried to go 3D and it just looked awful for it. I feel this is a series that needs to come back, as it was initially thought of as a Zelda clone, however in 2023, Zelda has abandoned that dungeon crawling style. Alundra coming back with a top-down adventure puzzle style like the first game in the series would definitely be well received. It would have to have those insanely hard puzzles as well though. That puzzle rage was part of the original experience. Next I want to talk about Breath of Fire. The original Breath of Fire was released in April of 1993, and the latest game was Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter released in November of 2002. I know what you're thinking, but Shinky, you're forgetting about Breath of Fire 6 that came out in 2016 for mobile phones and PC. No, absolutely not. Don't even go there. We all know that the mobile Breath of Fire 6 is an insult to all Breath of Fire fans. Not to mention gacha games are terrible. I guess I'll give Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail a pass, but BOO! Anywho, Breath of Fire is a turn-based RPG, and it had a wonderful master system for character advancement. Breath of Fire back in the 90s and early 2000s was one of those series you knew you were going to have a great time with and have absolutely zero regrets once you booted it up. The series absolutely has to come back, especially with turn-based RPGs being on the rise again with games like Chained Echoes and Sea of Stars. Breath of Fire would absolutely be a welcome addition to that style of game. Come on Capcom, give us more adventures of Ryu and Nina and a true Breath of Fire 7. Bonus points if it's a pixel style game like the first two games in the series. On to the first game I ever bought with my first job. The Legend of Dragoon was released in December of 1999 for the PlayStation 1. The game was a one-off release and never took off for reasons I will never understand. We did however get a direct port of it on PS4 in February of 2023, which is something at least. The Legend of Dragoon was a turn-based game with a very unique battle system. It used a quick time event series of button presses called additions to multiply damage done by regular attacks. As you level, you get more additions, which result in more damage. This game has a pretty split fan base. You either love the game and demand a sequel, or you think it's trash. There's really no in between. In fact, every year on April Fool's Day, there is at least one April Fool's Day joke claiming that a remake has been announced for it, and I fall for it every time. That being said, several years ago there was a rumor going around that Bluepoint Games was working on a remake of the game, but nothing has been seen about it since. As far as I'm concerned, remake would be nice, but I'd be happier with another game in the series with that type of combat system. I guess Pennyblood is the closest thing to that combat system that we're ever going to get. But Shinky, you're a JRPG YouTuber! You can't talk about games that aren't RPGs! Yes sir and madam, I can, and I will. Kid Icarus is one of Nintendo's longest-running franchises. It's only had three games in the series, the first released in December of 1986 for the NES, and the latest is Kid Icarus Uprising in March of 2012 for the Nintendo 3DS. The series started out as a hard-as-nails platformer, however Uprising turned it into a hybrid rail shooter and action game. I personally wasn't a huge fan of the original game, 
probably on account of the fact that I was a kid and the game was just way too difficult for me. But Uprising is fantastic. That being said, I haven't completed it due to the fact that it's physically painful to play. The controls were absolute murder on the hands, using the circle pad to move, the L button to shoot, and the stylus to aim. It forced a claw grip and was incredibly difficult to play for long periods of time. Kid Icarus Uprising would 100% from a remaster or new release using a dual stick control scheme. Pit and Palutena were included in Super Smash Bros. Brawl as well, and I'm sure most people had no idea who they were until that game. A new game in the series would be a great way to bring back one of Nintendo's core IPs again. And the last series I want to talk about is SNK's Crystallis. Crystallis was released in April of 1990, and other than the Game Boy Color port released in June of 2000, as well as being available on Nintendo Switch Online, it's the only game in the series. A sequel was planned for the Neo Geo CD, which by the way, I had no idea it existed until I started doing this video. However, that ended up getting cancelled. I would assume that was due to SNK just seeing more profit in their arcade games such as King of Fighters and Metal Slug over a console adventure game. Kind of a shame. Crystallis was a top-down action-adventure game with gameplay that kind of resembled Zelda 1 to 3. The difference with Crystallis is it had an equipment system that relied on elemental weapons used to attack enemies and solve puzzles. The game had a more upfront story than other games of its kind back in 1990, so it definitely stood out. I have next to no reason why this game should come back from the IP graveyard. I just really want more people to experience and understand how unique of a game Crystallis was at its time. Come on SNK, bring back Crystallis. Now that the world of arcade gaming has passed its prime, the world deserves it. These are only a few game IPs that have been abandoned that I feel need to be revived. If I wanted to list all the IPs I missed that I played growing up, we'd be here for hours. Some other series that came to mind that I didn't dive into were Mega Man Legends, Wild Arms, Dragon Buster, Beautiful Joe, and Snowboard Kids. What IPs do you feel have been abandoned and need to return? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious about games I might have missed. That's the meat and potatoes, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have a wonderful day.